What's up guys, doing some baseboard over here, so I thought I would show you guys a really useful tip here. Um, when you're doing remodeling, a lot of the corners will be out of square, you'll have all kinds of problems with it. So, to eliminate that, you can just cope the corners, it's faster, it's cleaner, uh, it's all around good. Um, it works great for stain grade, you don't have to or paint grade because you're caulking the corners anyway. Uh, stain grade, you can do it as well. You just have to be a little more careful. And yeah, you can use a hand coping saw, but a jigsaw gets it done faster. And like I said, for paint grade, <laughs> it's way more efficient. So let me walk you guys through this. Okay, first let me show you the problem with 245s. Let's say you just threw this board on there. Boom, you shot it on. Then you go to throw this one on. You got this big ugly gap, and right there at the details, when you're trying to caulk that, that's where your caulk joint's really gonna show. So you don't really want that. By the way, I always lay out a whole room, dry fit everything, and then nail it off for that reason. Anyway, there's a lot of reasons why 45s won't work all that great. Say you cut one a little bit short, then you got the, even more of a gap. Okay, so. Let's just do the coping method and I'll show you why I like it better. So with this, first thing I'm going to do is just cut this piece square to square and just set it into place. And then we're going to measure for the next piece. So make sure you've got this sitting in there pretty well like you like it. See, it wants to rock on me, so I'm going to make sure that it's sitting with the top in there. And if you need to, go ahead and tack a nail in there because it's going to work out just fine. So then you just measure across the floor. I got 49 and 13 sixteenths. 48 and 13 sixteenths. It's Lexi. I'm right handed, so I always work a room right to left so that when I get to the saw, everything's in the direction that's ergonomic for me. So we got 48 and 13 sixteenths right along the bottom of the board where it's sitting on the floor. Now you're gonna 45 away from that. That's your short point because the coping part takes all of that out. So 45 degrees measured to the short point. If you're working with MDF and you put the jigsaw straight down on this corner while you're doing this, you're going to scar it up. So I kind of hover up above. I just place the jigsaw up against my thumb and that gives me a stable uh, articulating thing there. <laughs> so uh, you want to make sure that you're cutting a little less than 90 degrees. Anything over will bump over and be in the way. So you just want to be angled back a little bit and you leave every bit of the face, the painted surface on the front. You're just cutting out the background. Now when you get up, when you get up to where a detail is and you have to start turning, then you rock the jigsaw back where it's not seen on the back of the board and then the face where you're gonna see it, you come through with your cut. So come up. So also, if you have a really detailed piece, if you need more wiggle room for your blade to get around a cut, then you cut a little extra out over here. See, now you've got this nice big gap that you can get whatever angle you need to. But for a lot of things, just coming back, and then forward through your cut. And when you get back to the top, 
square back up for a 90 degree cut there. So there's your finished product. As long as everything is back here, everything will be out of the way. There you go. This is the part that you will actually see. So it looks all funky on the back there, but this will this is all you'll be seeing. And you know, if you take a little bit of the flake a little bit of the paint off, don't worry about it because it's going to caulk right over. All right, now hopefully you just slide right in and done deal. There you go. Now, let's say let's say uh let's say you're a little short over here. So this is why I recommend not nailing off until you get a whole room done. If you want, if, if you have one a little bit short, you want to tighten it up, just take a little cardboard shim, whatever shim you got around, throw that back there. And throw your piece in. So now you've got a small gap up here at the top, but this line's getting caulked anyway, and you're never going to see that, and you still got a really good clean cut. Now also, sometimes what you'll have is the bottom will be kicking out. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but the bottom will be kicking out like that. So all you do is put your board in, and then shim that top out to hit it. And this is how a typical corner looks all around the house. They, they still need to be painted, that's just the caulking, but everything comes out. And here's a really bad one. This is in the closet, I didn't care. Um, that caulk shrunk out, shrunk up, but I'm just gonna hit that again. But, you know, compared to, uh, Compared to 45 bevels on each end, this just comes out consistently cleaner every time. This one, obviously, I cut the little small piece and then jammed that back in there. Then here again, I just measured straight across the floor. If you have a, a door, it's always easiest to put your tape in and measure that way. But, open the other way. There you have it. Bam. Done deal. Alright, hope you guys learned something here. If I think anything else, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Laters.